Hello everyone! Today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in January 2022, so let's get into it. So I guess I'll start off with some stats for my month. In January I read a total of seven books, which was also a total of 3,269 pages, which comes out to an average of 109 pages per day. My average rating was a 4.14, and I gave out one three, three and a half star, three four stars, and three four and a half stars. Three of the books I read were ebooks that I borrowed from Kindle Unlimited, and four of them were physical books that I already owned. The genres this month weren't very diverse. I read five fantasies and two mystery thriller novels. So I guess we can start with the first book that I read in January, which is Across the Green Grass Fields by Shauna McGuire. This is the, I believe, the sixth book in the Wayward Children series. The Wayward Children series is a series of novellas set in this world where these doors appear for children to go through and it's their own kind of world tailored to them almost it's where they belong it's where they find their place they can go through these doors but there's also the opposite to that in the real world where there are these homes for these wayward children where they go while they are either dealing with being back in the real world or waiting for their door to reappear for them to go back to where they belong this one specifically follows a new character that we haven't met before, Reagan, as she journeys through her door into her world, which is the Hooflands, and it's all about her adventures in the Hooflands. Uh, I don't really want to say much more just because it's so short, and I mean it's not really spoilers, but it is the sixth book, so I don't really want to say much more than that. This one ended up getting a four stars from me. I enjoyed it as I have enjoyed all of the Wayward Children books. But I will say I believe this one was my least favorite. I do always enjoy seeing these various worlds. That's one of the most intriguing parts of the whole series for me. And I do expect to see Reagan in the future. I think I've heard that she's in the next book. So I'm interested to see where her story goes in the real world. I guess I would say my favorite part about this really was just Reagan's relationship with the other characters in the novel, the centaurs, Chicory, and just figuring out her world, her life, her destiny. The second book I read in the month of January was Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. This is my first foray into Sanderson and the Cosmere as a whole, and I'm so excited that I finally started on this expansive universe because I'm dying to read more. I have all that's published in the Mistborn Saga trilogy, the first trilogy and the second trilogy or the second series so far, but Elantra specifically is about this city that was full of these people who were basically gods. They had this super cool magic and then one day, I think it was 10 or 15 years before the events of this novel, something happened and basically everyone became zombie-like, I guess is how you could explain it. There was this plague basically that befell all of Elantrians. They were exiled within their own city. They couldn't leave. Um, the capital was moved from Elantris to a little city right next to it, but this novel follows. Ryoden, who is a Lantrian, who wakes up one morning knowing he's going to get married in a few days. He is an Lantrian, so he's thrown into a Lantris, cursed with the plague, basically dead. Meanwhile, his wife-to-be, Serene, Serene, she shows up in the capital wanting to surprise her future husband, only to find out he is dead. Her story follows her political battles, wanting to solidify that marriage alliance between Elantris or the country and her own home country and that entails this political battle of sorts with a priest who has also recently arrived in the city. I really enjoyed all the political dynamics of this story and I'm only excited to dive into that more with Sanderson's future novels because I'm pretty sure that will be a consistent theme. I really was intrigued by Elantris itself, the magic system. I will say I think the bits set in Elantris 
were more interesting to me. Rayodin was my favorite character. The other two kind of got on my nerves a little bit. They were just frustrating, irritating, annoying. And the religious aspect of this wasn't something I expected, but I did really enjoy that. I don't think I've ever really read anything like that before. But overall, I really enjoyed this one. I ended up giving it four and a half stars, and I am so excited to have finally started The Cosmere. And I know this book is supposed to be getting a sequel at some point in the future, so I'm intrigued to see where that goes. The next book I read in January was a reread for me, which I reread for the Becca Fowles by the Angel Along, where we are rereading the Mortal Instruments and the entire Shadowhunter series. So we started off in January with City of Bones, and I mean, I enjoyed it. It's always fun to be back in this world because I don't realize it's just very nostalgic and I enjoy it more than I realize. The Mortal Instruments isn't my favorite series in the Shadowhunter world, but like I said, it's nostalgic. I read it back in high school and it's just one of the first YA series I really got into. If you don't know, The City of Bones is about this girl who finds out she's actually a part of this world of demons and shadow hunters and angels which she has not known her entire life. But one day her mother disappears and she's attacked by a demon. And of course, that's gonna lead her into this whole confusing life, just throw her right in. Not much more else to say about that. Um, it was a super quick read. I think I read it in like two days, if even. And there is that one plot point at the very end of this book that is very, very questionable, especially given the author's past with what I've seen online and I don't really like that or condone that. The whole incest plot is very disgusting. Even though I know the resolution, I just want to say that, I mean, you can still enjoy this book and this read, but also have major questions for the author and criticisms for the author over her choices. Because it is a choice, that is for sure. Not much more else to say about this, I guess. Um, I am excited to continue the series. I've read this one a few times, I believe, but the rest of the series, especially the last few, I don't think I've read that much, maybe once or twice. So yeah, I'm super excited to continue this, read along, and discuss it on the live show. Oh, and this one got a four stars upon reread, four-ish, three and a half. Somewhere in that range. The next book I read was one I read on Kindle Unlimited and I actually read the first two books in the series. Those two books being The Ruin of Kings and The Name of All Things, both by Jen Lyons. These are the first two books in the Course of Dragon series. Obviously I was, l I became interested in the series because Jade from J.D. Ray Reads absolutely adores it, one of her favorite series of last year, and I wanted to give it a go because it was free on Kindle, so I read it, and it was a time. I don't really know how well to describe the plot because it is very, very, very confusing. Basically, this guy, Kieran, has been told these stories all his life about princes and quests and dragons and all kinds of things like that, and then one day he wakes up to find out he is actually related to one of these princes in one of these houses. And that just completely flips his life upside down. He had no idea, but it's not everything he exactly thought it would be. He's locked in these power struggles, having to deal with the family that has claimed him as a prince, and meanwhile having to deal with his destiny that he is not meant to save the world, but he is meant to destroy it. And that is the most basic summary I can give you, but it is so, so much deeper than that. There's gods and monsters and demons and dragons and magic. It is so much. It is so confusing. That is why I took a couple stars off, I believe. The Ruin of Kings ended up being a 3.5 star for me, and The Name of All Things just barely scraped a 4 star. I really think part of this is because it has a... For one, it has a dual timeline. Something is going on at one point, and then another thing is going on in another timeline. But I always found myself preferring one over the other and just not getting as much from that as I wanted. And there's a lot of lies about family lineage, and there's this body swapping 
plot line, which was very confusing. So basically, you never know who is who at any point in the story, and that confused me way too much. I also felt like I wanted to like be flipping back and forth in the novel, trying to find, oh, I've seen that name before, let me flip back and see if I can find it. But it's not super easy to do on my Kindle, so I kind of wish I would have had a physical copy to read that, but that's whatever. These books are definitely very interesting. There are characters that I would love to learn more about and hear more about, specifically Talon and Sonera, I guess is her name. I definitely am interested in continuing the series. There's only three more books, and I think the final one is out this year. So I am definitely intrigued to see where this all goes. It's not like top of my list for right now, I guess. The sixth book I read in January was Ace of Spades by Farida Ibike Iyamidi. This one I enjoyed so much. I think this might actually be my favorite of the month. The tagline of this is Gossip Girl Pretty Little Liars meets Get Out and I cannot tell you how accurate that is. This book follows our main characters Chiamaka and Devin who go to this elite kind of prep school. They're starting their senior year of high school and one day these anonymous text messages start going out. The first one targets Chiamaka, and the next day one's targeting Devin, and the text messages seem to be specifically targeting those two, the only black students in the school. So the stakes start getting higher and higher, and the text messages continue, and the story is about our two main characters dealing with the repercussions of those, and obviously trying to figure out who is sending them. This was so much more intense than I even expected, there are so many plot points woven together. I kind of felt like I knew what was going on at some points, but I also was completely unsure. It was just very intense and has a lot of social commentary on race. I'm not one to really speak on that. I know this book has been getting a lot of hype from the community and I would say it deserves it. I think my only kind of issues with this novel were the main character Chamaka, I kind of, she was very annoying a lot of the time. She just has that mindset of what I'm doing is more important than what you're about to say or what I want to do. My plan should come before you. Me first, basically, was her, was her mindset. And that's fine. It's just sometimes, especially when she's working with the only other student who is getting attacked by these text messages, maybe just see what he has to say. And I also felt like the stakes were a little bit higher for Devin. I understand why that is because of a specific plot point. I don't want to say too much, but it just kind of felt imbalanced at some points. But overall, really, really strong debut, I believe, from this author, and I will definitely be reading more in the future. This one got a 4.5 out of five stars from me. And the final novel I read in January was The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. Almost said Hugo. That is a completely different book. The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle is about this guy who wakes up in a different body every day trying to solve the murder of Evelyn. There's not much more I guess I can say about the plot of that. That is the very basic overview. This book was also so intense. Somehow the two mystery novels I read in mystery thriller novels I read in January were my favorite of the month. This book is so intricately woven. Sometimes I could guess some plot points and reveals. Sometimes I had an inkling, but there was no possible way I was ever going to guess everything that happened. It was very crazy, very mind-blowing. It had very big clue vibes. Um, just that being locked in a house with a bunch of different people who it could who could potentially be the killer. I love Clue, so I loved the setting and tone of this. I will say there was one revelation at the end about what all was going on that I wasn't too keen on, but whatever, the rest of it was still very enjoyable. There was also one very icky part where the author was describing the main character in the body of a fat man and it was disgusting the way he was writing. Just very extreme fat phobia. The author was kind of trying to, I believe, give faults to each of the hosts of the main character, like not being able to see well, things like that. Just the way he was describing being in this body was very unsettling, like very uncomfortable and disgusting to read. Just how judgmental it all was. 
Um, so I would say that would be the one major fault of this novel. It was a very good mystery and I really enjoyed it. So um, those were all seven books that I read in January. I feel like I had a very good reading month. Even though there weren't exactly any five stars, I still enjoyed everything I read pretty much. And I think I did well with page count and everything like that. Starting a new job was a bit much. To, but I somehow kept up my reading. Yeah, I'm hoping February at least goes as well as January. But that is all that I have for you today. If you've read any of these books, let me know in the comments down below. And I will see you with another video soon. Bye!